Everyone knows that our daily habits are the key to long-term growth and success. And yet, most of us fail to follow it. We know what steps we need to take, but putting it into action seems to be difficult for most of us. You say from now on you will work out every day, but on day three you feel like letting this idea go. Then you say you're going to read for one hour every day, and that doesn't work out either. You have got other commitments, you say. And then you decide to wake up at 5 in the morning, but you still wake up at 8. Why do we fail so miserably in something that we want to do so badly? Especially when we don't even need to pay for this. It's free, yet they can be so life-changing. And then, if we decide to do something about it, but instead we fail, we feel this guilt for not being able to take control of our life. Now I'm not perfect either, but the past month or so, as I've started to track my habits with the techniques that I've been using, my life has kind of changed. I recently read Atomic Habits by James Clay, where he said that to create and stick to a habit, you need to make that habit as easy as possible. He tells us to follow a habit for no more than two minutes daily, because everyone's got two minutes. And then once that habit has been successfully formed for two minutes daily on a consistent basis, then you can increase the duration of the habits from two minutes to five minutes, 10 minutes, 15 minutes, etc. For a professional procrastinator like me, this seemed like a golden ticket. I can follow on a daily habit and all I have to do is follow it for two minutes daily and be successful. But sometimes when you try to create these new habits, they don't seem too attractive to follow. And sometimes you actually forget to do them. Because let's face it, you're not used to doing them in the first place. This is where habit tracking comes into place. Anyone who tracks or journals some part of their life understand the power of it. When you write down something, you know that it tends to stick to your memories. Same way if you track your exercise, your food, your mental health, your meditation, anything, you know that you will follow it. However, I decided to spice things up a bit. The way I track my habits is inspired by the don't break the chain method or the Seinfeld method which was introduced by the comedian Jerry Seinfeld who by the way for some reason doesn't want any credit for this productivity method. For this productivity method you need to complete a daily goal and then mark an X on your calendar to signify that you have completed that said goal. Eventually, as you do this, you form a chain of X's on your calendar, which makes you feel accomplished and is increasingly rewarding visually and therefore prevents you from breaking the chain. The longer the chain, the harder it gets to break that habit. Sooner or later, you will realize that you've built this habit of journaling or meditating. Now, I loved this method. However, I felt like I could tweak this a bit more. Now, according to him, when you track a daily habit, you have to mark an X on your calendar. But what if you want to track more than one habit? Then how would you mark an X for the other habits for the same day because having too many calendars for different habits does not seem practical. This is where I thought of introducing a whiteboard to the equation. For me personally, a whiteboard has been the answer to my daily habit tracking. I believe that this has been one of the best investments for my productivity in a long time. I love the fact that it is in my room so I can remind myself for what habits I need to track and what I need to do for that day because I also write down my to-do list on this board. I love the fact that it is in my room whenever I see it. It reminds me of what habits I need to track and what things I have to do for that particular day because I also write down my to-do lists on this board. But more than anything, I can now track more than one habit and mark an X for that particular habit, which is super satisfying. Here's an example of what my whiteboard looks like. I'll start by writing the date on top left side of the whiteboard. Today is a Sunday and this is the plan for the upcoming week. Below the date comes the daily affirmation. Each day I change the date and the affirmations in the morning for a more positive and productive day. Below it comes all the habits that I want to track for the week. Tracking the same habits for at least 3 months is crucial. Then once you've successfully formed those habits, you can move on to the next one. Over here I'm tracking my no junk, intermittent fasting, reading for 1 hour and my wake up time. Then I create a horizontal line wherein I'll mark my X's for that particular day. On top of each box, I'll write the date and I'll also make sure that the ladders are aligned to one another to avoid confusion. I only stick to three to four habits at a time because obviously the more habits you add, the more pressure you put on yourself to follow them. And then because you put so much pressure, you end up breaking the chain and you give up, which is why it is crucial to make these new habits as easy as possible. Remember, the turtle wins the race, so patience is key. I also track one week at a time, this way I do not overwhelm myself. In my mind, I tell to myself, I only have to follow through this week. 
I have to only think about this week and nothing more. Like this video if you're enjoying so far. On the right comes the to-do list for the day where I write my top 3 to-dos of the day. Below it, if I have any ideas for the week, I write it down on a sticky note. Then on a Sunday, which is my favorite day, they call it reflection and review day, I note down my habits for the week on Notion app. I total my habits and reflect and review if I need to make changes in any of the habits. If there is a habit that I'm not able to follow, I break it down to make it even more easier for me. For example, waking up at 8am seemed hard for me, so instead I decided to wake up at 9am or before 9am. When waking up at 9am becomes easy for me in the future, I can then make the habit more challenging by waking up at 8.30am. And believe me, as weeks pass by, the habits do get easier. And as they do get easier, you can make them more challenging. The other habits are tracked by 1 meaning successful or 0 meaning unsuccessful. Now remember it takes a lot of patience to follow a habit. Forming a new habit is a game of patience. And it's better to form 3 successful new habits in one year than doing 10 habits at one time and failing in all. You have to remain humble and take baby steps. You can just start by doing one habit for 2-3 to three months and then add another habit. I hope you found this video valuable. Take care and I'll see you in the next one.